I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction. Here with your cattle market summary for the week ending April the 12th, where maybe it's spring, uh, don't know, they're going to be turning cattle out in the Flint Hills and some other uh, major grazing areas this week as uh, it's, it's time to turn the cattle out. Uh, especially on those double stock pastures they'll get in there and while that grass is really coming early uh, they'll graze it heavily until the middle of the summer when it usually starts to get dry and then they'll rest that grass and they found they can get just as much gain out of it and uh, be better stewards of the land doing that so uh, we'll see that but man up in the northern plains and upper midwest uh, another big uh, wintry snowstorm coming through in the spring another bomb cyclone i'm not sure why we've started calling winter storms bomb cyclones but uh that seems to be the norm now but uh, a lot of whiteout conditions and uh just makes it uh impossible to, to get around or do a whole lot uh i know one sale up there had to cancel had cattle in gonna have a sale on friday had to cancel it till sunday don't hardly hear of having an auction on Sunday very often, but uh, you got to do what you got to do. But uh, surely these uh, these storms will get uh, less and less as we move forward because it's, it shows it's going to be spring. We're going to be in Easter here, and it's a late one. But let's look at the board for last week. April live cattle futures. Monday was down a quarter. Tuesday up a dime. Wednesday down two cents. Thursday up 12 cents. Friday up 55 cents on your uh, spot market there, but uh, n nothing too big. Uh, none of your changes were much more than a half a dollar, but April live cattle futures ended the week at 126.55. That was up 50 cents for the week, which was good because it was uh, staving off some uh, delivery pressure and things like that through the week, but uh, stayed fairly strong. June live cattle futures 121.45 up a dollar 98 and uh, August which is is our lowest low as we go through the dog days of summer it's up to 118.20 now a lot of us including me don't think we could hold uh, that good of a market uh, especially when we get into there's some real real uh, heavy supplies uh, show lists uh, of market ready cattle when we get off into the the hottest part of the summer and I know we've lost a lot of weight here with these storms and everything, but uh, I would be surprised if we can hold it that good unless some more pans out here with this pork deal in China. But April feeder cattle, Monday was up 57 cents. Tuesday took that 57 cents away. Wednesday down 97, Thursday up a quarter, and Friday unchanged with your April feeder cattle contracts, 145, 42, down 73 cents. May ended at 150 and a half, up 38 cents. Uh, you get off into the fall there, your September contracts at 159.77. You remember a couple of weeks ago, I told you that those fall contracts of feeder cattle uh, looked uh, a lot more realistic at 170 than the 150 that they weren't quite at yet. But they've gained a lot of ground, and uh, and. Uh, don't worry, there's going to be plenty of demand for those green yearlings coming off grass at the end of the summer, uh, middle of the summer, through the end and into the early fall. Your fat cattle trade was kind of unusual uh, this past week. Uh, they sold uh, middle of the week. Uh, Southern Plains gave in again uh, steady at 124, but glad to hold the steady. And you saw the Northern Plains just trickle trade, never really uh, a whole lot, but from 126 to 127. They are trading at a premium to the Southern Plains, which is very logical with all the weight loss and the bad storms that they've had up in that area. Some 203 to 204, maybe a little 205 in some places in the Northern Plains. And that was all kind of all through Thursday. Uh, and through Thursday, they'd only sold 33,100 head in your five area feeding region uh, with a weighted average live steer price at 124.73, which was near steady. And a, a dress steer price of 20462, which was not very well tested. And so we figured that the Northern Plains would pull the plug and, and drain a whole lot of cattle on Friday. And we never really saw that. Uh, but we started getting some reports late in the day. Um, we did have some trade in Nebraska late in the day, western Nebraska. 
uh, Wyoming out there in that part of the country some Colorado trade at 127 and a half I have no idea how much of it happened it was it was late early evening on Friday uh, Eastern Nebraska started selling more cattle at 205 now both of those would be positives both of them would be higher than they traded earlier in the week and higher than the bulk of the sales uh, the prior week so that's a positive uh, we even saw Texas come in with a few on mandatory price reporting at 127 not sure what that was but it was three dollars higher than the bulk of the sales which had already happened but uh, and we had saw some cattle come in from Colorado at 125 before this late trade we're talking about but uh, be interesting to see Monday when the finalized report comes out and see uh, just how much traded at some of those higher levels but uh, not going to be surprised now that if your weighted average in your five area feeding region isn't uh, maybe not significantly higher than the previous week but it'll be some higher box beef cutout values gained some ground last week through the week choice cuts 228.72 your average trade for last week that was two dollars and twenty four cents higher than the average from the previous week selects 220.05 that was up ninety six cents uh, widening out that choice select spread to eight dollars and sixty seven cents as we start to get into some of this grilling demand in some of our higher concentrated uh, population areas and a good movement of 605 loads of cuts, grimming, uh, grinds, and trimmings. Your slaughter uh, had big Saturday. You know, we fell behind uh, like on Thursday with some of those whiteouts as that storm was coming through where some of your uh, Northern Plains plants were at. And so uh, on Thursday, I think it was, we fell off 10,000 than what we normally have. But they gained it all back and more on Saturday. So. Don't, don't let people tell you that we can't keep up with the supplies that we have out there. But through for the week last week, 634,000 giant weekly slaughter. That was 13,000 more than the previous week and 23,000 more than the same week a year ago. This pork export deal, uh, we saw in the middle of last week that uh, we had uh, larger pork exports to China. Uh, almost three times more than we'd ever seen before uh, so we are starting to get more reports and more reports in that China is in trouble uh, with this African swine flu and uh, and they're going to need uh, some more protein they're going to need some pork hopefully down the road they'll need some beef and we'd be more than willing to send them uh, as much as they need but uh, I talked about this uh, last week uh, on one of our visits if 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 it's down as much as some people fear, if they're uh, if they're a breeding herd on their on their hogs is down as much as some people fear, maybe over 50 percent, um, they're going to be hard pressed to find enough to fill that gap. And uh, and if they get to taking some beef and uh, and that the growing middle class over there in China starts deciding that they want uh, U.S. beef and start. Uh, really acquiring a taste for it we may not have enough supply to fill that either it, we just can't fathom how many people are in China they uh, we don't even have a fourth as many people in our whole country as they do but uh, we talked about the storm uh, that storm gonna take more weight off but uh, really for as bad as it's been all winter long we haven't seen hardly any bump in the market sure the northern plains is trading at a couple three dollars premium to the southern plains but we've still lost all that market position uh on your fat cattle trade uh as we move in early this week uh, don't forget to go on and some of your uh, uh nebraska cattlemen disaster relief efforts are out there get on to dv auction they've still got the timed uh, auction up there with several uh, items that uh, about anybody would be interested in. They've got some embryos up there, they've got some gift certificates, uh, got some cattle equipment, different things, but get on dvauction.com and you can go over there and bid and all those proceeds will go to the uh, Nebraska Cattlemen's Disaster Relief Fund. Also Alma, Nebraska on Tuesday here tomorrow they're gonna have a pretty darn good sale. They've got several loads of fancy yearlings there and hoping to have a good crowd both on DV auction and in the seats uh, bidding on those cattle and at 1 o'clock p.m. 
They've got that donated replacement heifer, uh, hoping to have a rollover sale there and, uh, and raise quite a bit of funds for the disaster relief there at Alma, Nebraska, and that's on Tuesday. So don't forget about that. Your real-time index on cattle market central ended the week uh, by gaining quite a bit. And I think most of those gains are from losing some lower prices uh, at the end of the seven-day moving average. But 144.29, that was up $4.89 compared to the end of the previous week. Your feeder cattle and your auctions not up quite that much on, on your true feeder cattle. Steady to $3 higher for the week in your sale barns. Spots five to eight bucks higher on some of those true stalker cattle uh, that were getting uh, two-way uh, bids and two-way demand there both to go to feed and to, to turn out and, and some of those cattle were weighing in the sevens doing that. They're not afraid to turn a big one out on grass anymore. Calves steady to five bucks higher and like I said here in the last several visits, I, I do expect to, to see the, the, the crazy demand for these stalkers and on some of your calves to, to, to tail off just a little bit until, because now that we've turned out on the, a lot of these bigger uh, uh, grazing areas, they'll back off a little bit now and wait till we get uh, a lot more green grass in some of those cold areas that saw so much uh, snow and, and cold temperatures and it really hadn't got warm enough yet to really get a lot of green grass going there and then we'll see your calves come on again but uh, should be maybe a little bit of lull in, the, in that crazy grass fever that we're, uh, we've already started to see and we'll see some more a little bit later in the spring but uh, let's look at some quotes there late in the week Fort Scott Kansas on Saturday uh, had a good feeder cattle auction had 62 head of 859 pound steers bring 146.75 in Fort Scott, Kansas. Burwell, Nebraska is a sale I told you they end up having on a Sunday. Uh, they had a lot of people just turn, tuned in on, online instead of showing up there, but they, they got the cattle sold really well, including this one set of big heavy steers. 60 head of 992 pound steers bring 132 that's the best we've seen for quite a while but that's a look at your markets from home db auction office here at canyon texas we'll talk to you next week